JD here, Tyrell Limerson. As you can see, we are not on F1 2021. We are not on a Formula 1 game. I think for one of the first times ever that I'm actually on something different. And if you can't see on the top left-hand side of the screen, we are on iRacing because recently the F1 2021 Mercedes F1 car has been released and this was actually helped constructed by Mercedes themselves and you're about to see it now we have absolutely no idea what we are doing because I have played iRacing a very few times in my life where I've been at an event or on a simulator but honestly I've never really ever ever played this game at all and this is the first time I'm playing at home and a special thank you to Yogan for letting me use his login so I could actually uh, try this out first. So I really, really appreciate it. Make sure you follow his Twitch down in the description below. So yeah, this is literally just going straight in the deep end, going at Silverstone because that's a track obviously I know pretty well on one of my favorite tracks. And we're gonna give this to a spin. You can see by the controls and the settings to be lock up instantly that we really have no idea what we're doing on iRacing. I have no idea how the controls work and Yoga told me after this that I was actually running the default setups. So I'm not even using the battery properly, the ERS, DRS or anything at all. So yeah, the car's going to be quite understeer compared to when it uses a setup and when we can actually deploy it but we will save that for another video. Please let me know which track you want me to do next after this. I'm thinking maybe the North Shife or Hockenheim. And this goes to the camera settings as well. I really haven't changed anything. I've just put myself in here and really see what this experience is like as we already get our first slowing down warning, which I'm a complete noob when it comes to eye racing. So please, please educate me as much as possible here. But we were just running our normal force feedback sensors we did from uh, F1 2021 and they actually feel really, really good. And maybe this could be the start of Codemasters actually having a little bit of competition with the 4 one game. So I think the pedals are vibrating. As I was just saying there, my pedals are vibrating. So I'm running the V3 pedals, which they have a motor inside them where they actually vibrate on certain games. On F1 games, it's not the case. But on this game, when I was braking, it was actually vibrating, which is such a cool experience. That's why we're almost dying here. And straight away, I could just feel so much more sense of speed with the car compared to when I play F1. And when I play on F1, I think a lot of people have said this as well, especially people who've come from iRacing or true simulators over to the Formula 1 games is that the force feedback is just very very a disconnected feeling with the car very feels like you're on a hovercraft quite a lot of the time it's floaty experience which I know many of you will probably understand what I'm talking about but for people who don't it just feels like you're you're not reacting with feeling you're reacting visually to what you see Rather than real in real life, you can feel the oversteer and the snap of oversteer coming, and you can always I don't know that like premeditate where you can counteract it. But on the F1 games, it's more about the visual aspect on you reacting to that, which I think definitely needs to be improved quite a lot going into the future. And jumping on this straight away, even though I haven't really played around with the settings or anything at all. I just immediately felt so much more connection and feeling to the car. And I have a DD1 wheel or a podium wheel, which I've tried many, many different settings with on the Formula 1 games. And I haven't been able to achieve that uh, connection with the car, truly. So something you just get used to in time and then you can still be very, very good, obviously. But having that connection with the car is just something that just really can't describe and I think in the long term will make it a much more enjoyable experience but also get the most out of your own performance as well so these first few laps here we're just really just getting used to this 
uh, completely because this is just a completely brand new experience and yeah, let me know if you want me to do a lot more uh, iRacing videos. I'm thinking of doing a lot more things on the Seta uh, Corsa as well. Uh, Capizioni. Those games look Second up. really, really, really fun to drive. And I think it'd be nice to just try something different. Especially with this wheel that I have where I'm not really maxing out its potential. And going on a true simulator such as iRacing or ACC or R-Factor games like that. Really, really cool to see how it actually feels and this is really the closest you can almost get to what it feels like to drive a Formula 1 car and not only with the feeling of the car that I had but just the sense of speed is just so much more than compared to uh, playing the games on the Codemasters game which again as I said earlier I really hope in future that we have some more companies try try to provide a little bit more competition because I think that's one of the dangerous things of when you don't have a competition in your market or your segment that you're trying to conquer it not that it makes you lazy but it doesn't make you go that extra mile to make things are that make sure that things are fully fully polished and I think that's one of the main criticisms I have with Formula 1 it's not that it's not a complete sim or anything like that because I know they have to cater to a casual audience but I just feel like the games for how much you pay for each year that they're just not polished off enough and there's just too many small things within the games that make it a draining experience which I've said uh, many many times like, the racing makes up for it when you have a good race and things aren't going wrong then and the game's actually running smoothly then r the racing kind of balances that out but a lot of the time, a lot of times that people don't see that it's a very, very frustrating experience. And a lot of things, I think, should should just been fixed a long, long time ago. And shouldn't have even been involved still to this day. Considering how long they've had the game for as well. But playing this was really, really refreshing. And as I said, we're running pretty much the stock setup here. We're not using any really of the... A battery or the ERS mode so I think my time is like six seconds a lap slower than what I should be doing which shows you how uh, frightening it is when you put on the setup and stuff which I will be doing for my next video either around this track or I'll be carrying well comparing the default where I track like Hockenheim and then put on the setup to see um, how it goes but yeah with iRacing the only tracks I've done in the past have been like uh, Brands Hatch, uh, Laguna Sega in uh, like a GT car or a Formula Ford and obviously a little bit of Silverstone but really barely any running at all and this is the first time I'm using it at home so again massive massive thank you to Jorgen uh, for using for let me use his login he does iRacing quite regularly and uh, it's a pretty good player as well so make sure you check out his Twitch uh, down below but you can see here we're finally getting to grips with the car a little bit more but as with a true simulator the tires are slowly starting to go off which is something i just have to get used to i have to get used to these actual physics of this game compared to the form one one and i don't know if this camera angle is what the drivers really really see or not i know they're very very limited so this might be quite close to what they are seeing here you can see just understeering a little bit. So the tyres are slowly but surely going off. And I think our best stop so far is a 32.1. Where in reality you want to be doing like a 24 apparently. Which is a... Um, yeah. When you put on the set that's going to be very very scary. We're coming through it here. I didn't find the steering or the traction too difficult. But it was mainly the brakes, and I think it's probably because I haven't changed the brake bias or anything on the SERP at all. But I know a lot of people, people such as uh, Bono House, who is an absolute god on this iRacing, as we're locking up here as well. He said the brakes were the hardest thing, and, and a little bit unrealistic, apparently, compared to what it is in real life in many, many cars. So, yeah, the brakes I found very, very easy to snatch 
and lock up as we're coming through into the final chicane here let's see what we do this time and locking up super super heavily and you can see just a chronic understeer i think my tires were well and truly done at this point so we're gonna go back into the garage and see if he can work out if we can change any settings but i think we're just gonna go back out on these medium tires which i believe they changed a fresh one so yeah i'm a complete noob at iRacing i don't know how anything works at all this is literally my first true experience at it um, without someone else helping me set up the car or change tires for me when i was in a simulator at the event so yeah, I was guessing that they changed the tyres here, so I've got a lot to learn on this, but could be something quite interesting um, to do in the future. And you can already see tyres definitely felt quite a bit more grippy uh, straight away. So we're going to start another lap here on these hopefully fresh medium tyres. So going through this tell one's completely flat out. I'm trying to use the same breaking points I do in F1 2021, which are... Uh, fairly similar, so about 100 meter board, really carrying speed here. I can't see this apex at all because of my tyre and wing rows in the way. And you can see we're ever so slightly up, so one tenth up so far. Now I'm going through to 50 meter board, so I try to create a late apex like you usually do in the F1 games. This corner feels like it just goes on absolutely forever but getting the traction really really nicely and getting a very very good exit and you can see my throttle steering a braking application on the bottom left hand side of the screen this one here you want to really be taking it flat but i think the setup i'm running here is making it a little bit of a challenge to do that middle of the track turning it nice and early for this right here and getting a really nice exit going on to the hangar straight and I stood at the end of this hangar straight before in real life and the cars just approach you so so fast into this corner and going through the corners here again you just really feel their sense of speed and along with the force feedback that you're getting through the wheel just makes it a much immersive experience but the brakes again are really really the sticking point for me as we go a little bit of a skateboarding on that curb and yeah 31.7 I think there's a lot of time to find. So we've gone back into the pits now. Just looking around these settings. First time. Yeah, there's a lot of things to change that you could do. So it could be quite an overwhelming experience. So if you think F1's bad, then go into iRacing. Because there is probably a million things <laughs> that you could be changed. So we actually worked out how to change tyres, which is good. So we're going to go on the soft tyres now and see how this goes so don't ask me about the gloves i don't know why they're yellow brazilian gloves and Senna gloves or washing up liquid gloves i have no idea uh, i think yogan has decided to use these gloves so blame him not me and now let's see what we can do on these tires and i think we're going to be showing you as you can already see by the deltas so we come out of these corners here see how much time we're actually gaining already but a very harsh reminder that this is an actual simulation not a arcade game and tie temperatures and being on the grass is not a fun experience at all and now we've got to be nice and slow on our outlet before we start our fast as that we did in the session so coming through it's here this is going to be my fast lap but i did i didn't spend too long on this as we're going flat out to this tub one let's see how much time you can actually make up on these soft tires here so coming to try and carry as much speed as we possibly can it's gaining it on the exit missing the apex very very heavily so really really hard to see that apex with the camera angle that I actually have, or the camera settings that I have at this moment in time. So, a 50 meter board, that's when we're braking. A little bit of brake to just rotate the car going into the corner. You can see the braking application again, just holding it ever so slightly. Once we get a line, then we go completely fast out. And we're about, just about four tenths up on this lap so far. 
do we go flat through into here? I think we did. Yes, we did. We did go flat. First time we've gone flat going through into that corner. Now Magus Beck is my favourite sequence of corners on the F1 game. Turning in nice and early. Now the car bites in. Get a really good exit. Going on to this hangar straight. Going underneath the bridge now. And because of my car set, we're barely getting into 8th gear. Coming through to here now. Try and take all the speed. It feels such a high speed sensation going to here. Did we lock up going to here? Ever so slightly, but we actually get it right. Bumping the curb a little bit too much here. But we're going to get quite a nice exit and come across the line. It's just going to be, it's going to be a 130.8. But again, we're about six seconds away from when we use the SERP and maximize the ERS and DRS. So I didn't really spend too long on this. Just wanted that real, just that first raw initial experience. Because sometimes it's really good just going in the deep end, not knowing anything and experiencing something for the first time. And going through to here, we're trying to keep up with our goals, but the tyres, I think, are well and truly done at this point. And going into here, doing a double lockup. And that was me completely done. So I really hope you enjoyed that. Let me know if you want me to do more iRacing videos. I'm really looking forward to when I actually use a setup because it's going to be pretty crazy how the cars go feel six seconds of that faster or more. And yeah, see that double lock up into there. So this is a really, really awesome experience. Thank you to Yogan once again. Thank you for support on the channel. And I will be catching you very, very soon. Peace.